Hey everybody, it's Jax here with Jax and Brittany Take. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I messed up already. Okay, hey everybody, it's Jax Taylor. When reality hits with Jax and Brittany, we are back. Uh, okay, it's going to be just me uh, this week. Um, you know, first of all, I just want to say thank you to uh, so many of you out there that reached out to me personally over the Instagram, you know, the DMs, you know, the comment sections. You know, um, I've been really reading all of your message and it's all your messages, and it's been really, really amazing to see how many of you have, you know, shared your struggles, your personal struggles, your mental health battles. You know, it's it's really made me feel not only supported but seen by so many of you guys. And I don't think I've ever really realized how many people have you know similar battles. You know, when you deal with mental health issues daily, it can be you know. Like a very lonely, lonely place at times, you know, where you feel so, you know, misunderstood, confused, alone, you know, and there's so many times you question yourself, you know, am I crazy? Like, what's going on? Like, I just, you know, you can't handle life sometimes, you know, what's wrong with me? You know, it's, it's just very, very tough. You know, I've made some really, I've had some, sorry, I've had some really dark moments and a lot that I've kept to myself over the years. So I'm finally able to, you know, speak openly on things and understand myself a little more. And it's really been very freeing in a way. And, you know, thanks to this podcast and everything, I can kind of reach out to people and kind of hear back from everybody else as well. You know, so anyway, I just want to say thank you so much to, for, uh, you know, all your kind messages and, and sharing your personal stories with me. You know, I've been getting so many questions from people over the past few weeks. So I wanted to dedicate this episode to you guys. So many of you have been written, written in and, and I'm, I'm going to answer as many questions as I can here. So here it goes. Bear with me again. It's just me today, and I really, really appreciate you guys and all your support, and uh, well, let's get going, okay? So here we go with some of your guys' questions. So the first one, how is it being reunited, reunite, sorry, I'm starting again. How was it being reunited with Cruz after leaving the facility? And this is from Diane Schatz. Um, I got to say, it was the highlight of, you know, this whole thing. It was my end goal. It was kind of like the Super Bowl. It was, uh, gosh, I had so many emotions. I cried my eyes out um, because I was kind of in fear that he wasn't going to remember me. I mean, everyone's going to say, everyone's saying, you know, your son's going to remember you, your son's going to remember you. But, you know, when he came running, you know, to me, it was, I could, I, I can't even tell you the emotions I had. I was just crying and he was just so happy to see me. And he, he let go of our nanny's hand and he ran right up to me. And it was just, it was the it was the most it was just the most beautiful thing ever, um, so yeah that that answers that and, and I I literally didn't let go of him for a very long time he was uh, <laughs> he was connected to my hip there for the next actually the full day so yeah it was very very amazing and it was it was very you know emotional a lot of tears um, on my end but um, he's just doing so well and I'm just I'm just so proud of him so there's that I hope that answers that okay so uh, what does a typical day look like uh, when you wake up. Um, so my, I, I guess this question is for what was the typical day of, uh, uh, my typical day when I was in the facility. So I would wake up at seven 45. I would have a cup of coffee. Um, I'd have a protein shake. Um, I would take my medication. I would then, you know, take one of the nurses or she would take me to, uh, the gym. I was allowed to leave to go to the gym for, for one hour, two hours a day. Then I would get back, take a shower, and then I would be in therapy for three to four hours. Um, uh, yeah, three to four hours. With a, a, There would be a lunch break in there in between. And then um, after that, we would uh, take a little bit of a break. And then I would either go back to the gym or um, I would take a nap or I would go right back into therapy. So on average, every day, it was seven hours of therapy. Sometimes it was, you know, uh, three hours here and four hours there or three hours here. And, you know, it, it, it really kind of it, it varied. But seven hours every day I had therapy, you know, in that. It was really, really intense. I was meeting with doctors, um, different therapists, going over different, you know, just different things that were go are going on in my life. Uh, you know, I my drug of choice is is anger. And, and it's one of those things where other people got to leave their drug at the door where unfortunately I brought mine in with me because obviously you can't leave anger at the door. So, um, it was tough. It was tough, you know, talking through these things, being emotional, being, letting my guard down, being vulnerable, kind of digging into my past, um, talking to, you know, 
complete strangers about my life and kind of, you know, being a, I was a little bit of embarrassed sometimes because, you know, these are things that as a 45 year old man are, are embarrassing to me. And in the beginning I was very, I guess, guarded and, 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 but it took me at least about a week or a week or so for me to like kind of let my guard down and kind of really, really open up. And it was an amazing experience. I, at some point I would like to do another stay, um, you know, at a facility or, or, or another one, like it may be in a different state, but, um, I really got a lot out of this. Like I said, it's it's something um, that I really needed to do. And I'm sad that I took this long to do it because Brittany has been asking me to, you know, do something like this for a very long time. And it's just, I come from a background where we just, we really don't ask for help. Uh, the men in my family just really never asked for help. And it wasn't my father's fault. It wasn't my grandfather's fault. It's just, we were never brought up to ask for help. And I'm hoping that I can break that cycle now with my son if he needs help that he can ask. So that's kind of what I got out of this. And it, it, it was an amazing run. So um, my next question is, do you think reality TV made marriage harder? That is a tough question. And this is from KT Loka. K KT Loka. Uh, do I think reality TV made marriage harder? I want to say yes and no. Um, I'd be, you know, it'd be silly to say it doesn't make it harder because obviously you're in the public eye. So, you know, you're not only getting pressure from your family and your peers, but you're getting pressure from the outside world too, from, you know, whatever's going on in your life. Everybody's got something to say, you know, everybody's, everybody out there is living in a perfect marriage and they love to, you know, put their two cents in. So, um, it's, it's, yes, it is harder, but I feel like if you have a strong marriage and, I guess a strong support system, you can get through it. Um, but it does make it harder. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say it, it doesn't. It, it, it does. It does. But, you know, you got You just got to really work at it. You know, you got to go to therapy. You got to, you know, take time for one another. You got to do date nights. You got to, you know, not lose the romance. You got to not feed into the public. You got to feed into social media and the comment sections. You got to stay away from that. And that's, I think what killed my marriage, if I had to say, you know, what killed my marriage the most, I think I took Brittany for granted a lot of the times. I think I was given a lot of wiggle room with my behavior. I think, um, you know, I've been doing my, my, I've had this anger for a very, very long time. As long as I can remember, I've been a very angry person since I was a kid. So, um, but I think during our marriage, I was never held accountable for my actions. I was never given any consequences. It's always like, oh, it's just Jax. He'll get over it. Oh, it's just, he'll get over it. Or, you know, he'll, he won't be like this forever. I was never given any, like, listen, if you don't stop this, I'm going to leave you until, you know, Brittany had enough. I've never really had any but he held me, hold me accountable for my actions and tell me like, listen, you know, you need to go somewhere. So I think, um, you know, after nine years of putting Brittany through the ringer, she kindly had enough and, and I kind of had no choice. That's kind of, you know, where I stand with how marriage is on reality TV. It can just, it can go one way or the other. You just have to really, you have to really work hard, extra hard on your marriage when you're on reality TV, if that answers the question. I know I took a long route on that, but I hope that answers that question. Are you in pain after walking, running, or even just standing? It's not your feet, it's your shoes. This summer, switch to G Defy shoes with their patented technology. It aligns with your body, provides superior shock absorption, and trampoline-like energy in return. Now, I use these for the treadmill because the old shoes that I was using did not work. If you guys use these on the treadmill, it's like walking on pillows. G Defy offers soles and styles for any activity, plus two free orthotics. That's huge. I got I use both of them and I love them both. Like I said, especially for the treadmill. Whether you're an athlete or a busy parent or always on the go, G Defy shoes deliver the comfort and versatility your feet crave. Say goodbye to discomfort and hello to unparalleled support this summer. Enjoy a special offer. Visit gdefy.com and get $20 off your order of $100 or more with code reality hits. Now I got mine all in black. They're sick. You guys got to check them out. Experience the ultimate comfort with GDFI shoes. Visit GDFI.com today. What are some of your goals that you have set for yourself in the next few years? That is a great question. And this is from Christine R-O-S-E-E. -E. Um, it's for me, it's one day at a time, one minute at a time, one hour at a time. Um, I don't think setting goals is uh, future goals. I mean, it, this is a tough question because 
you know, when you set goals, you sometimes you can set yourself up for failure. So I, I'm very one day at a time right now. I just moved into my new place. Um, you know, I'm taking better care of my health. I'm trying to stay in a structured routine. I'm trying to, you know, make a lot of time for my son. I'm trying to, you know, create other, you know, other jobs. I'm trying to focus on my bar and my podcast and, po- and, and possibly another podcast that I'd like to get into regarding mental health. I'm just trying to stay focused and I'm just trying to, I guess they say, keep my side of the street clean. And, and that's, you know, my goal right now. I try to, you know, read all my journals that I've uh, written over while I was in the, the facility and just try to stay focused. Um, stay, setting goals right now, it's just, I, I'm not there yet. Um, I think in time I will be, but right now I'm just kind of focused one day at a time. And when I kind of, you know, build myself up a little bit better, then I'll start setting some goals. But right now it's just one day at a time and making sure that I'm okay for my son. Okay. The next question, who are the key people in your life who you feel you can go to for support? I hope you have some key people in your life that you feel you can trust. Um, that's a great question too. Um, it, you know, living in LA and, and, and it's tough to have good friends that you can trust. Um, I have a lot. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Who are the key people in your life who you feel you can go to for support? I hope you have some key people in your life that you feel you can trust. Um, I have a few people that I can trust. Um, I hate to say that I only have a few. Um, I have a lot of acquaintances. LA is kind of the home of of a lot of acquaintances, and and it's it's really hard to find good people that will be in your life for you because out here everybody's clawing to the top and everybody has ulterior motives. And you know where I'm from in the Midwest, you know the people's morals are a little bit different than they are here. So um, I have a handful. Um, I have you know some people that I that I work with um, on my team. I have my sister and I have a couple buddies that I can go to for, for uh, support when I need it. But um, it's, it's slim pickings. I hate to say that. Um, but it's just, it's one of those things where you just got to keep your circle small and, um, and just, you know, focus. I focus on myself and, and, and with my therapist. So that's about it for that one. Um, next one. Are you still living in the Valley? Did you move out? Yes, I finally moved out. About two weeks ago, I got myself a townhouse. Now, this has been, everyone keeps saying, do I live with Tom Schwartz? I do not live with Tom Schwartz. He has a townhouse that is next to mine, but they are completely separate. Um, We have our own building, uh, but we do not live together. But yes, I did move out. Um, I thought it was a good move for me to, you know, get my own place because it wasn't fair for Brittany to keep getting these Airbnbs and and she wasn't sure where she was going to go. And plus I just didn't want my son to be bouncing around to all these places. It didn't seem right. They weren't his home. It wasn't his house. It wasn't his pool. It wasn't his bedroom. So while I was in the facility, I took it upon myself to, you know, find a townhouse uh, that is absolutely beautiful, brand new, um, very secure, updated, remodeled, super safe for crews. I wanted something that would be very, very safe for crews. She will be like, okay, wow, this place is absolutely beautiful. It's secure. It's brand new. And yes, I know I live next to Tom Schwartz, but he is my best friend at the end of the day. And if I need help with something, if I need help with crews, he's right there. I have a couple other buddies that live down the street. I know everyone's thinking like, oh my gosh, they're just going to get crazy party life. That's not true. We are all old. Older now we all have different you know um, ideas in life and and I think it's we have a good support system here and and I, I really like it Tom has come through a divorce um, you know so he kind of helps me get through this so yeah uh, to answer your question I did move out I've been now here uh, I would say three weeks uh, finally got internet <laughs> that took me a while but um, the building's absolutely beautiful I'm really happy here and I honestly can't wait for Brittany to see this place. I know it's going to take time for her to come here, but um, I, I really can't wait for her to see it. And Cruz's room is absolutely beautiful. Uh, thanks to, you know, my my team for helping me out and, and, and do that. And thanks to some of the companies that helped me out, like Wayfair and, and, um, and um, I can't think of some of the other. Wayfair, I'm sorry, Mixed Tiles made his room just absolutely beautiful. So, yeah. So, next question. Are you living with Schwartz? So that I kind of answered that question in the last one. He is living in this vicinity, but we each have our own townhouses. Um, 
We are not living together. Let's make that very, very clear. But like I said, he is my best friend. And having your best friend who's gone through a divorce and we're the same age, you know, it really, really helps. You know, I've been with my wife for 10 years and now I'm alone. So having my best friend nearby is, is very, very helpful. And he's gone through what I've gone through. He's, you know, a year ahead of me in this game, two years ahead of me in this game. So you know, it helps having him here. And, and you know, he loves Cruz. And, and when Cruz gets to come over here, he's going to, you know, love hanging out with his Uncle Tom. Saw your tattoo. I'm sorry. Saw you got a tattoo. Are you going to get more? Corinne Casali? Uh, yes, I am, actually. Um, I'm. It's kind of my midlife, midlife crisis thing right now. A lot of people go buy cars or buy motorcycles or get ear piercings or shave their heads or do whatever. Mine is tattoos. I really, really enjoy tattoos. I've wanted to get more in the past. I just, you know, life got in the way and I didn't have time. And so, yeah. And, and each one of my tattoos means something. I obviously struggle big time with mental health. So each one of my tattoos symbolizes mental health, uh, in some fashion. Um, so yes, I'm actually going to get my next tattoo on Monday. I'm doing the other arm, um, uh, completing the other arm. And uh, actually, the next tattoo is going to be, uh, I think it's the Archangel Michael. I think I think that's his name. Or not, I think it's Michael the Archangel. Michael the Archangel, which is kind of who overlooks you, you know, when you're confronting the good and the bad. So, yes, I am. I'm going to keep getting more. I love tattoos. All right. Next question. What did you think of Raquel making a statement about you? This is coming from at PWXO. Now, I heard about this. Uh, while I was in treatment, um, I got an email from my manager about this. Um, I'm just going to make this very clear. I've talked to Raquel maybe three to four times in my entire life. And each time I've talked to her, it was hi or bye. It was no more than three to four words each time. I don't know her from Adam. Um, I don't even, I still don't know to this date what she said about me. I can look it up if I want to, but I don't really care. It's not, I'm not looking for any kind of validation from her. I, I honestly wish her the best. And that's basically all. I don't know her. I don't really know what she's going through, uh, right now. I obviously know what happened with the scandal situation, but I really don't, you know, yeah, research what she does, research her podcast or listen to her podcast or listen to anything she says, to be honest. And that's not just a dig at her. It's just, I have other things to do in my life. So like I said, I talked to Raquel three to four times in my life and it's been no more than three to four words. So I just want to get that very clear because people ask me this question all the time and I just, I, I don't know her. So that's it for that. When Reality Hits is brought to you by Haya. Typically, children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise, filled with those two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk growing kids should never eat. That's why Hyatt was created, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. Now, Cruz takes these every single morning with his breakfast, and he's off to school, and he loves them. Hyatt is made with zero sugar and zero gummy junk. It tastes great, and it's perfect for picky eaters. Now, Cruz is the biggest picky eater ever, and he loves these vitamins. Haya is crushed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies. It's supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many, many others. It helps support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. It's non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, allergy-free, gelatin-free, nut-free, and everything else you can imagine. Haya is designed for kids two and up and sent straight to your door so parents have one less thing to worry about. That makes things so much easier for you busy parents. I also recommend checking out their new kids probiotic and nighttime essentials. Bruce does use the nighttime essentials because it makes him sleep so much more comfortably. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for the best selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash reality hits. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to HayaHealth.com. That's H I Y A H E A L T H dot com slash reality hits and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. If you could take back any one thing in the past, what would it be? Wow. Um, I don't, geez, how do you answer this question? This is from L-Y-S-S-A, Lisa, Lisa Hasado. 
Lisa Hasado. If I could take back any one thing in the past, what would that be? Uh, there's a lot that I would take back, to be honest. But um, obviously, everyone's going to want to say the the situation I had with with that other girl before Brittany and I were married, the um, the cheating scandal. Obviously, that was bad. Um, I would have liked to stay engaged a little longer. I wish we didn't rush our wedding as fast as we did. Um, I wish we would have took a little more time on that. I wish, I wish I would have not rushed my relationship with Brittany so quickly. I think the fact that I rushed it so fast because she moved here from Kentucky, I think things moved a little quicker than they should have. Um, I don't think that we got to know each other as, as well as we should have in the beginning. Now, that being said, we've been together 10 years and we know everything about each other. But if you're asking me to go back, what would I have done different? That was what I would have done different. I don't think I would have just probably asked her to move in so quickly. I, I would have tried to have been girlfriend and boyfriend a little bit longer. I think, you know, maybe that was one of my downfalls that I rushed everything so quickly. Um, obviously, my anger um, got in the way. Um, my... Um, my ego got in the way of a lot of things. My, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I was very, I was very, um, I was very aggressive. I was very, uh, entitled. I had such entitlement. Um, there's a lot of things, uh, I, I wish I could take back, especially now that I can reflect and look back. And especially after being in the facility, I can look back and be like, okay, this is what I did wrong. And I can look back and like, well, this happened because this, and this happened because of that. And if I wouldn't have done this, then this wouldn't have happened. So, I mean, it's, it's easier to say, yes, I wish I'd take all these things away, but these are all mistakes that I made and I'm learning from them. But, um, those are the, those are the things I, I know that's probably going to surprise a lot of people, but you know, yeah, I, I wish I would have really have gotten to know Brittany as a girlfriend, boyfriend quicker or a little bit slower than just rushing into our relationship. I think that maybe have taken a little bit of a toll on us too. So I know that's a pretty, no one's really ever asked me that question before. So I think now looking back after being in the facility, that's kind of where I stand with that. Yeah. Okay. How will you and Brittany share the podcast now? This is coming from Ash Johnson, 1904. So right now we are doing one week on and one week off. Um, and right now this is working for us. Um, my goal, and you know, I'm probably, I'm probably getting way, way, way ahead of myself. My goal is for us to come back and do this together. I want to be a divorce success story. I want to go on and talk about marriage, talk about divorce, talk about separation, because the whole world is going through things that, I, like, that I'm going through. Uh, or things, I'm sorry, everybody in this world is going through, you know, crazy things, divorce, uh, separation, you know, um, you, you know, losing a partner, whatever. And I feel like Brittany and I, at some point, could possibly come together and say and talk about where it went wrong, what we did wrong, what we did right, what would we change, and hopefully, you know, change people's opinions of of marriage or divorce or whatever. But are you still continuing therapy? Yes, I am. I'm seeing a life coach, which he was on my podcast last week. His name is Scott, and I'm also seeing talking to my therapist, who I was in. Uh, speaking to within the facility. Uh, her name was Tracy, who was just an amazing, amazing person. Um, I've gone through different therapists in the past. As you guys know, um, about eight years ago, I decided to see a therapist after everybody was trying to make me go and I was anti-therapy, anti-therapy. And then I finally found a woman and this woman decided to out me at a bar one night and it just so happens, just as goes to show you how small the world is, this therapist who I was seeing, who I was letting my guard down, who I was being very vulnerable to, was sitting at a bar in Hollywood. And it just so happens that Kristen Doty and Carmen, if some of you guys remember who Carmen was, my ex-girlfriend, was sitting at the bar too. And this woman was telling everybody that she was Jax Taylor's therapist and she was just going in on my life. And how I found this out was, as I was with Tom Sandoval and Tom Schwartz in Australia, we were doing a tour there, like we do appearances. I literally got off the plane 
jet lagged as hell. I get five to six missed calls from Kristen Doty, which was, I thought was the weirdest thing because I was like, well, I haven't really talked. Why is she calling me? She knows where I'm at. And I finally call her and she tells me, Jax, your therapist was at a bar wasted, getting drunk, telling everybody about your life. So long, you know, long story short, Obviously, I didn't see therapist a, a therapist for a long time after that. You know, after letting my guard down, finally seeing a therapist, then this happens to me. You you can understand why I didn't want to go back to therapy for a long time. So, jump to about what eight years later, it was time to see a therapist. It was time to give therapy a second chance. That what what I went through was a very very unusual situation, but it did happen, and it did it did give me a little PTSD. So. Anyway, um, I, obviously in the treatment, there were multiple therapists and I really connected with Tracy. There was some males and there was some females. I wanted to go the male route. I really did. I started off with a male and I just thought for me, after going through what I went through, I just thought a male kind of knows another male pretty well. I just, not that women don't know men. I just think that a man knows what another man is going through and why he does certain things. And I, I personally think women see men, they do, they see them very well, but they want to see them how they want to see them and not how we are, if that makes any sense. So I connected with, with a man for a little bit. He ended up leaving. And then I went to Tracy and like I said, she's absolutely amazing. And what I love about Tracy is, is she was, it, she is not just a teacher. She is a person that struggled, you know, it's nice to talk to somebody that's gone through exactly what I've gone through. Not, you're not dealing with a therapist who went to Harvard and is reading all these books on psychology and just reading out of the books and trying to tell you what things are. It's so much better to talk to somebody who's actually gone through what I've gone through and has beat it and is, has tools to give me. And that's, and that's what I found with Tracy. So yes, I am continuing therapy. I'm actually going to find an, another therapist very soon. Um, I'm looking for another one because I'm really getting addicted to therapy and I kind of like it, to be honest. It, it kind of just, it sets my week up. So are you scared of being diagnosed with bipolar? Have bipolar and mixed emotion. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It says, are you scared of being diagnosed with bipolar? I have bipolar and I have mixed emotions. Crystal Stultz. Um, I knew something was wrong. Everybody in my life knew something was wrong with me. I'm one of those guys that don't want to know that something's wrong. Like if I'm sick, I don't want to know if, if, you know, God forbid I have cancer. I don't want to know. I, if I don't want to go to the hospital for anything, if I can, if I can put some band aid on it or some tape on it, if I can just pour some bleach on it and, and that could be it, that's how I am. So going to the facility, I knew I was going to be diagnosed with something. I knew I was going to get blood work done. I knew I was going to be put on medication. I knew there was going to be multiple doctors looking at me and that's what I was, I guess, scared, anxious, excited. I was, I, there was excitement in there because I'm finally going to find out what's wrong with me and I don't have a choice. So they went in, I, I went in, uh, I'll, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be honest. I was on Lexapro before I got in there. I was on there on Lexapro for about, I want to say six weeks prior to the facility. And I did not see a change. I did not see anything. It was, nothing was, was happening. I went to the doctor there and I said, listen, I think I'm depressed. I'm on Lexapro. I've been on it for six weeks. I don't feel any different. And after being like, you know, gone through so many different, like seeing so many doctors, they were like, Jax, you are not depressed. You are bipolar. You are bipolar two. I think it's called number two. It's there's one and two. I'm the second one. And I was like, what, what does that mean? They're like, first of all, you're on the wrong medication. You're done with this medication. We're going to put you on something else. I'm not going to tell you guys what I'm on. Um, I'm, I'm not on lithium. I know all of you guys have reached out to me about lithium. I am not on that. Um, there's too many side effects on this stuff. I don't really want to tell everybody what I'm on, but I'm not on lithium. I am extremely happy with the, with the medication that I'm on. Um, I got to say, since I've been on this medication, I've maybe gotten angry a couple times, but I feel, I know myself getting angry and I can pull back. I can pull back. And, you know, I can tell when like, okay, I, I, I need it or I need a, 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 an anxiety pill. But for the most part, it's been a really, really, you know, good 
I guess, drug or medication that I've been on. It's, it's been working a lot. In fact, I have to check in this week to see if I should up my dosage or not. And I may, I may not. I'm, I'm going to talk it over with my doctor, but everything right now is going, is going well. Answer your question. I'm happy that I'm being diagnosed with bipolar. I'm going to be, I would like to be an advocate for it. I'd like to talk about it. I want to research it. I want to know everything I can possibly know about, you know, this disorder. It does run in my family. Um, I don't want to say who has it in my family, but I do have family members that do have it. And I did not know it, it, it's, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for. It's genetic. I did not know that. So uh, to answer your, your question, um, I'm not scared. I'm excited. Um, I'm, I'm happy to finally know what is wrong with me. When Reality Hits is sponsored by Wayfair. How do you like to get ready for fall? Let's get cozy. Love candles? Do you cook up a storm? Fall is calling and Wayfair has everything you need to welcome the new season into your space. Now, as you guys know, I just moved into my new townhouse and I literally outfitted my whole home with Wayfair. From couches to bedding to pictures to picture frames, I literally got everything from there. They have everything from wreaths to accent pillows, holiday decorations, which Halloween's around the corner, fall scented candles, and wall art for under $50. From the front door to the kitchen, Wayfair makes it easy to create the space you envision on any budget. This is perfect for anyone in your family who loves to decorate for the holidays. Whether you prefer hosting, baking, or just getting cozy, Wayfair has everything for your favorite fall traditions. Wayfair makes it easy with fast and free shipping, which I love. Even on the big stuff, they still even help you set it up. I needed help with everything. Get ready for the seasons of change. Visit Wayfair.com or get the Wayfair mobile app. That's Wayfair.com. W-A-Y-F-A-I-R.com. Wayfair. Every style, every home. Do you want more kids in the future? That is a great question. I've been going back and forth with this, you know, with some people. Actually, I was having this question the other day. Um, And this is from at key, P-O-N 67. I guess, I guess I can say this. Uh, I don't think I'm going to have any more kids. I, I, I don't think so. I think I just want to spend all my time and all my energy on my son, Cruz. Um, I'm not sure what his future is going to be like, um, but I want to make sure that I can give him my full attention. And I just don't think it's fair to bring another child to this world and not give them equal amount of attention. And I love my son more than anything in this world. I'm going to tear up. Sorry. Uh, And I... We are trying to figure out right now what his next road is going to be like. Um, So as of right now, and I think for the future, I think I'm done with kids. You know, I'm 45 years old. Um, I'm at that window right now is if you do it, you got to do it now. (laughs) And um, yeah, I think we're going to just say no. I'm I'm not going to have any more kids. And I guess this is the first time I've ever said this out loud. So uh, yeah, to answer your question, no, I don't want any more kids. Uh, What's your favorite meal? My favorite meal. Uh, well, I love going to this place called Craig's in West Hollywood with you know my team. We have so much fun when we go there. It's kind of like an annual thing when, when everybody's in town. Um, it's kind of our spot to go. I just got turned on by a new place um, from my publicist, actually, John and Vinny's. And their pizza is absolutely amazing. Right now, though, I have to say, and this is not a plug by any means, I really enjoy these factor meals. I am now alone. I am by myself. I am used to having a wife, you know, cook three, three to four times a week for me. Um, but now I am by myself. And now I'm, you know, I'm a lot busier now. And I really got turned on to these factor meals and I just, I love them. They're easy. And like I said, this is not a plug by any means because there's so many different food. uh, There's so many different food services out there, but factors uh, is, is my favorite meals and they're healthy and I'm on a health kick right now. So I'm sticking with factor. Uh, My favorite, I'm sorry. Uh, so the question do you want? Oh, my favorite TV show. It's a toss. Well, I think everybody knows friends is my favorite TV show with the office being a very close second. So thank you, Casey Lee for that question. What's the biggest lesson you've learned from reality TV experience? Wow. Uh, 
I don't think clearly I've learned my lesson. I don't <laughs> to be honest. Um, I think I learn lessons every season. I always go into filming these, these, uh, series. I always go in with my head held high, but you know, I always make the dumbest mistakes. I I'm a very shoot first, ask later kind of person. It gets me into a lot of trouble. You know, my whole reality career has been the villain. You know, I've been, uh, painted as the villain for, for a very long time. Um, and I thought, you know, that's kind of what people wanted to see. So I continued that, that, that person. And it's hurt me in so many ways. I mean, it's destroyed my marriage. It's destroyed my friendships, but I thought, you know what, that's kind of what the people wanted. I thought that's what everybody liked. So I just kept going with that persona. Um, anything else that I've learned, I've learned, I'm trying, I'm still learning this, but I'm trying to take a back seat. I'm trying not to be the number one guy in the group anymore. I think that guy has, he needs to retire. He needs to go away. I, I need to learn to take the back seat more and things. Um, I need to be, I need to humble myself a little bit more. I need to listen a little bit more. I need to not react as, as much as I do. Um, and I, I, I have a fear of, of, you know, not being, you know, the main character. I have a huge fear of that. And again, these are things that I've never talked about before. So that fear, it, you know, it drives me the villain in me because I feel like, well, maybe I, if I do this or if I say this, that will just kind of create something that doesn't really need to be, but it will just keep me talked about. And that's just something that I've dealt with forever. And I'm trying so hard to cut back from that. So I guess, you know, I guess they're let those are lessons. I don't know if I've learned from them yet, but I'm really, really trying best advice for handling anxiety and depression. Uh, they're ask for help, ask, ask for help. Uh, work out, working out is a, is a huge, huge thing. Being healthy, getting plenty of rest, uh, talking to your friends, uh, going on hikes, uh, meditating, meditating doesn't work for me, but it works for a lot of people. Uh, going to the gym is, is mine right now. I'm on a huge gym kick. I have a huge addictive personality. I have a big addictive personality. And once I get on something, I don't quit it. And right now the gym is my thing. It's my drug of choice. I love it. I'm going like twice a day right now. I'm like thrive on eating healthy and, you know, drinking my protein shakes and getting up early and going to the gym, coming home, taking a shower. And that's how I start my day. So that's how I'm dealing with my anxiety along with some medication, of course. But, um, uh, yeah, that's the best thing for me is, is going to the gym and going for long walks too. How do you handle the hate and negativity online? Oh my God. That is a tough one. Uh, I have to remember when you get hate that I've always been told, you know, when they stop talking about you, that's when you should worry. So when people are giving you hate online, these are people that do not know who you are. Most of them are sitting in their parents' basement. They don't have a picture. They got a few followers and they're just looking to get a rise out of you because 99.9% .9 of the time, these people that say the negative things, if they saw you out in public, they would be the first one to ask for a picture. They'll be the first one to ask for an autograph. They'll be the first one to ask you questions. The first one to buy you a drink. 99.9% .9 of these people are those people. They just want to get a rise. They have no idea about our lives. They watch a snippet of us on TV. You have to understand we film hours and hours and hours of TV and you see, you know, you're seeing six, five to six different couples and you're only seeing, you know, snippets of their lives. And normally it's yelling and screaming or arguing or, you know, yeah, that's basically all you're seeing. You're not seeing the good because why? Because, well, the good is not the, the boring stuff is not that interesting, right? People want to see the chaos. And unfortunately, that is what's shown, you know, a lot of the times. Um, but there is a lot of good times. And, and people will, will come at me and say certain things like, you don't know. You don't know my life day to day. You don't see what we film. You just see what, you know, they put on TV. And, you know, that's just the way TV is. It's for every TV show is like that. It doesn't matter what TV show, scripted or non, that's what goes on TV, you know? So that's what, how people judge you. Is it annoying? Yes, it's annoying. Do I dive into the comment section once in a while? Yeah, I do. 
you know, I'll laugh at it, you know, because again, these are people just, a lot of people are jealous. They're insecure. They're dealing with their own demons and they'll project how they feel onto us. So that's kind of how I deal with that. <clears throat> Many people online think you're a narcissist. Do you agree? <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with this. Yes, I do agree. Um, I've literally have just learned probably five new terms that I've never learned before that I do. And I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this, but I do, I do all of them and I've done them all for years and I had no idea. I, I breadcrumb, a breadcrumbing or what is it called? Cookie crumb, breadcrumbing. I, I am a narcissist. Yes. Um, I, uh, love bomb. That's another one. Gaslighting. Um, there's, I'm missing some, but I do all these things. And, and, and I had no idea there was terms for these things. And I was like, Jesus, I look up the definition for all these new terms. I'm like, oh my God, I do that. Oh my God, I do that. I do that too. I'm like, I'm like, I don't even know how to talk anymore without being labeled as one of these things. So yes, I have to humble myself and say, do you think you're a narcissist? And I do, I do. I don't know how I became one. I do believe I'm a narcissist. Um, I am not a doctor, so I can't like say that for sure. But by just looking up the definition, um, I have to agree. I have to agree with people calling me a narcissist. I can't fight them on that because I do have pretty much everything that's labeled under a narcissist. And I've been this person for years and I had no idea. Again, these things, I was never, I was never held accountable for my actions for many, many, many years until recently, you know, until people have had enough. People were tired of walking on eggshells around me. People were just said, enough's enough. This is what you're doing. This is who you, how you're hurting. I know you don't see it because you never had any consequences, but this is the shit you've done. And this is the damage that you've caused. And these are the things that you're doing. So again, I know it's, it's late in life to learn all these things about yourself, but I guess it's better late than never. But yes, to answer your question, I do believe I'm a narcissist. Yes. When Reality Hits is brought to you by Quince. Shifting my wardrobe from summer to fall is always a challenge. Luckily, Quince offers timeless and high-quality items I adore, ensuring my wardrobe stays fresh and I don't blow my budget. Like cashmere sweaters from $50, pants for every occasion, washable silk tops, and so much more. Now, I'm a huge fan of the t-shirts. I wear them all the time. I wear them to the gym. I wear them when I go out. I literally wear them to bed. They are so soft and so comfortable, I literally don't have any other t-shirts. By partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices and premium fabrics and finishes. I love that. Make switching seasons a breeze with Quince's high-quality closet essentials. Go to Quince.com slash JB for free shipping on your order and a 365-day return policy. That's Quince.com com q u i n c e dot com slash j b to get free shipping and a three hundred and sixty five day return policy that's quiz dot com slash j b have you ever considered moving out of l a away from the limelight? It would be a lot better for your mental health. Come to Canada. <laughs> First of all, if I had a dollar for every time someone said, come to Canada, I'd be a very rich man and I can retire. Second of all, I absolutely love Canada. I've been to, I think I've been to every, I forget what you guys call them, providences or I can't remember, territories or whatever, but I've been to pretty much every major city in Canada. I'm about to go back to Toronto and, and my first time being in Winnipeg. I think after Winnipeg, I've literally hit them all. There's not one city in Canada, main city that I haven't gone to. I absolutely love the people in Canada. I love the food, especially in Montreal. Montreal has got to be probably my favorite places for food. I don't know if anybody knows this, but Montreal has the best food I've ever eaten in my entire life. Um, I, and I just love the people. It's, it's, a, it's a different place there. I think people are just a lot happier than they are here in the States. Um, I don't know. There's just something about Canada that just, just the people are just so great. I would love just to pick up and move there tomorrow, but obviously I can't, you know, I have a son and I have a job. Uh, would I move away from LA? I would love to move away from LA, but unfortunately my job is here. Um, 
you know, this is what I do. I do this for a living. It's a little late in life to start over. So, you know, I, I own a restaurant. I have a, a podcast. I'm on a television show. Um, I'm hoping to expand my restaurant. I'm hoping to expand the podcast. Um, you know, if I had a dream, if I could move anywhere tomorrow, it would probably be, probably be Florida just because I love Florida. But as of right now, I don't see myself leaving L.A. I've said it every year for the last 15 years that I'm getting out of this place. I hate it. Um, but this is where, where I live. And, you know, now this my son is here and, and you know, my ex-wife doesn't plan on leaving anytime soon. And I'm not going to leave my, my son. So, unfortunately, I'm going to be stuck here for a while. <laughs> uh, and a shout out to the Canadians out there. Luke A. Cole, 245. I will see you guys in Canada shortly. I'm coming to Toronto, Winnipeg. I can't wait. Back to Canada. Okay. What things have you been doing to prioritize your mental health? Well, I just kind of answered that lastly. And this is from M.E.L. Renid, Mel Renid, uh, prioritizing. I'm working out a lot. I'm very, very, a lot healthier than I used to be. Um, I've cut back on my drinking significantly. Um, I just, I'm the gym. The gym is my new drug right now. I love, I, this is going to sound, I don't know how this is going to sound, but I just love getting up in the morning. I love looking at myself in the mirror right now. And I love the way I look. I really, really do. I feel like I look healthy. I sound healthy. I, I, you know, I have structure in my life right now. Um, you know, I, I've forced myself to, you know, get up at 745. I forced myself to make my cup of coffee, check my emails, go to the gym, uh, come home, take a shower. And then, you know, I find out what, what my schedule is like with crews, what my schedule is like at Jack's is the bar. Do I have to go in? What's my schedule like for filming my TV show? I keep saying my TV show. It's everybody's TV show. Um, What's it like for, um, you know, doing my podcast and, and things like that. So I, I keep myself very, very busy because the problem is, is when I sit still, that's when my mind starts to go. And that's when I start living in between my ears. And that's the problem. So that's what I do to prioritize craziest or funniest encounter with a fan. Uh, I mean, these, this is going to sound a little graphic, but women have made me sign their chests before. Um, I think the craziest encounter with a fan, and I, this is God's honest, this has happened, actually happened twice. A, a husband and a wife came up to me and said, would you be interested in coming back with us? We have a plane. We'll take you back to where we live. This was, one of them was in Charlotte. And would you partake in a, I guess the best way to say this, relations you know, with my wife while I watch? And this was the husband saying this. And this has happened to me twice. And I have to say that is probably the oddest thing that's ever happened to me. Um, yeah, that's, yeah. I, oh, I've also had someone ask me if, if they could have my sperm to have make a child. I don't know if I'm saying this right, but they needed my stuff to make a child. And they would pay me and my girlfriend at the time uh, to do this. That was a pretty odd one as well. So those are the two <laughs> oddest things I've had. Okay. How, I'm sorry, favorite menu items at Jax's? Well, we got to say Mamaw's beer cheese. That is delicious. I love the black and white shrimp. Um, I also love the chicken parm. Um, my uh, partners are from New York and Jersey, so we got great Italian food. The pizza is by far some of the best pizza I've ever had in my life. I mean, the way it's served and it's thin crust and it's crispy and it's cheesy. The French fries with the spicy aioli, oh, aioli sauce oh, are absolutely amazing. And, of course, you can't go wrong with the burgers. And even the salads are great. The salads are great, too. And believe it or not, we have great mussels and clams. So a little bit of everything. But my favorite, I would have to say, top thing besides the wings are the black and white shrimp. Absolutely amazing. All right. How is Cruz doing? What's your favorite thing to do with him? Cruz is doing great. He's getting, you know, growing like a weed every single day. The kid gets cuter and cuter by the minute. Every day, Brittany is sending me pictures of him. Uh, I mean, like, look at him today. Look, I mean, look at him now. And like, she's styling his hair different or he's got a new outfit and he's in school and he's laughing. And the kid is the happiest kid I've ever seen in my life. He is just, he's just a doll and he's so smart. He's so, you know, witty and he's cute and he's just, he's just so lovable and he's just got so much love and he gets it all, all from his mama. Um, he's just like his mom in that he, he's just a very lovable, cute, sweet little boy. And thank God he didn't get any 
you know, shit from me. Uh, and he looks just like his mom too. I think, you know, some people say he looks like me, but I think he looks just like his mom. So, you know, I love taking him to the park. I love taking him to sky zone. He is an amazing swimmer. I mean, he, I can't get over how well he swims as a three and a half year old. He's diving down at the bottom of the deep end of the pool, picking up things, you know, he's jumping in, doing somersaults. He's just, he's just an amazing little boy. And that's why I don't think I can have another child just because I like, I just, I love him so much that I don't think I can give myself to anybody else or give attention to anybody else. Who's the first phone call of the day? (laughs) Who do you speak to most on the phone every day? I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not, but um, I would have to say I speak to my manager, Ryan, and probably my publicist, Lori, the most. Uh, And I think that goes with anybody who's in the business that I'm in, Um, you know, other than checking on crews. I think that everybody kind of checks in with their team and my team. I have a great team, uh, Ryan, who everybody knows, Lori, who everybody knows. And I feel like I take up a lot, a lot of their time. And I feel like they do amazing, amazing things for me. I I don't deserve them. I, you know, they don't get paid enough. They don't, (laughs) I probably put them through so much stress. Uh, But yeah, those are the people that I talk to the most. And if they're listening to this, they will agree. Uh, As you navigate your mental health journey, what can your fans do to help you support you? Uh, just be patient. I, I, I would just really like to be patient. This season is, is going to be rough. It's probably, I have to say in, in all the years of reality TV, this will be the toughest season of my life for multiple different reasons. My mental health, my marriage, my friendships, uh, you know, there's just so much that has gone on in my life the past eight months to the a year. I'm going through a lot. I'm not saying anybody else isn't is, but I personally am going through a lot that I'm trying to manage. I'm trying to, you know, deal with my mental health. I'm trying to deal with my divorce. I'm trying to deal with my son. I'm trying to deal with my businesses. I'm trying to deal with living in this crazy world, that fucked up world that we live in. I'm trying to deal with a, a lot of things like everybody else, but my life just so happens to be on TV. So I'm asking you, please, and I beg you, please realize that I am doing well now. I am getting better, that it's a long, long road. Uh, But just please be patient because I I know the beginning is going to be a little rough to watch. And I I appreciate everybody. I really, really do. I appreciate all the comments. So many people have reached out to me that are dealing with what I'm dealing with. And that's kind of why I want to do another podcast that talks about mental health, you know, a little bit extra on men's mental health, because I feel like men's mental health is not talked about enough. Um, and I feel like it, it makes me feel good. I get something out of this too. It makes me feel good talking about it. So again, to get back to this question, I appreciate all your guys' patience. I thank you for all the messages. Uh, that being said, I think we're going to wrap it up for this week. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I really, really love doing these questions. I feel like I answer a lot of questions that people have. Um, I really, really appreciate it. It makes me feel good. It's kind of a form of therapy to me. So we'll wrap it up here. I, uh, everyone have a great, great rest of the week. Thank you all for listening to when reality hits with Jackson Brittany and we'll see you next week.